Hi, I'm Tal Kandil, Innovation Business Director here in Cyber. So why are we introducing Cyber Cloud Entitlements Manager? During the last couple of years, we saw more data breaches resulting from misconfiguration issues that exposed over-permissive entitlements in cloud infrastructure and platforms. Malicious actors are taking advantage of poorly managed permissions and capturing sensitive data. Cloud Entitlements Manager is all about helping cloud stakeholders mitigate that potential risk with least privilege. By providing cross-cloud visibility, recommendations, and deployable remediation policies, we allow those stakeholders the ability to clean up excessive permissions. This way, users and services get the right permissions and the right entitlements so they can operate securely and successfully. Cyber Cloud Entitlements Manager brings detection of advanced permission risks born out of Cyber Labs, proprietary AI to remediate risky permissions, fast time to value with a zero footprint SaaS solution, easy to use centralized dashboard. And now, Chris Maroon, Cyber Global SE Director for Emerging Technologies. Hi. I'm Chris Maroon, and I just really want to take a quick moment to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us for this presentation of a really exciting new solution from CyberArk, Cloud Entitlements Manager, and I'm going to talk you through it. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what CyberArk has been focusing on, right? Over the last you know several years, right, including past the decade, uh, CyberArk has focused on lease privilege across all platforms, right? Windows and Unix and databases and many more. And now with Cloud Entitlements Manager, we can also focus on least privilege for cloud services. So today, IAM functionality as part of those cloud infrastructure services, they're not necessarily enforcing least privilege. So how can CyberArk help with this? Let's take a look. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show off the solution here. And it all starts right here in our main dashboard, which is referred to as the radar or the cloud environment radar. Now, there's a lot of valuable information right on the main screen and visually appealing to the user. They're able to not only just look at all the cool colors, they actually mean something. And the size of the bubbles also mean something as well. So if we're taking a look at the, the bubbles, the orange are going to represent one thing and the tan colors are going to represent another. We'll dive into that here in just a second. So inside of this, what we're getting is more information. So up in the top left-hand corner, we can actually see 61% medium exposure. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into some details, but you can also see the four connected platforms. You can see exposure over time, and we can change that based upon, you know, either a year or six months or really just this last past week. So what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit more about the bubble side of the, the screen here. So if I zoom in, Let's say, for example, on AWS, I can see all of the different accounts that I actually have and that is actually being managed within the Cloud Entitlements Manager interface. Now, it also exposes the exposure level of AWS and all of it put together. So we can see that that exposure level actually went up to 67%. And that's essentially because it's all of the accounts uh, blended together and averaged out to reach that number. So inside of this we can actually get out we can zoom out we can look at some of the other ones so we can see over here we've got some azure subscriptions with a medium exposure level of 50. we can zoom back out we can get into gcp and we can see the number of different projects that are involved there but let's take a stab at a little bit more information about aws now what we can see is is there's actually a difference in the colors now this actually means something so visually administrators are going to be able to see exactly what's going on without really having to get in to get more details. So as you can see at the top of the bubble uh, sphere here, what we've got is one that just happens to be a tan shade. Now that means that that exposure level is actually below that 30% level, which is a good thing. That means that we've taken the steps to remediate any risks that are involved in that AWS account. Now, if we look at one a little bit deeper, let's go into this CEMD1 environment. Now, this is an account 
and you can see it has a medium exposure level of 48%. So it's a little bit lower than the average, and that's probably because one of our AWS accounts is actually really high, and we'll deal with that at another time. But from that 48%, what we can see is this top recommendation, so we can see the top accounts or roles or other entities that are causing um, some exposure levels to be a little bit high. We can see that we've got 22 entities inside of this AWS account, and what we want to do is we want to dive in and take a little bit more uh, action upon them. So when I click view all, it's going to take me to the cloud entities. Now you can see over on the very right hand side, I've actually got some flags and this just happens to be ones that I'm actually following. So if I click on following here, what it's going to do is it's going to trim down that list so I can see the ones that I really want to focus on here for our demonstration. So I've got this Cyber CEM D1 S3 bucket access role. Now, this role is actually giving us a lot of information right on the main screen. So we can see from an overview perspective what the overall exposure level is and what that actually means. And we'll, we'll come back to that here in a second. We've got exposure over time. And we've also got this really awesome visual uh, access map. And we'll dive into that here in just a little bit as well. So let's back up just a little bit to the 60% level. Now, what does that mean? As you can see, we're looking at target resource. Now, this can be anything from EC2 to S3 to RDS and any of the other number of 200 and almost 40 services out of AWS. And that's going to link over to that permission type, whether it's read only or list or write access, anything that gives it full admin access over that one service. And then there's some other outlining factors that will play into that 60%, including some of the TAP activities that have really been utilized um, by anybody that's utilizing this role, but also the ones that aren't being utilized. So we want to kind of take into consideration all of that, and that's where that CyberArk proprietary algorithm is going to kick in and give us that 60% number. So let's take a look more on the exposure level um, access map. So if we look over on the right hand side of the screen, what we'll see is an access map that's going to detail out what folks can actually do. So if I click on the entity, I can actually show some different things. But let's back up and actually go to a user. So this is Robert. He belongs to the DBA team. And you can see that his access map allows us to be able to click on the user in a, in a sense and then see what resources he's able to gain access to. In this case, it would be S3. And then also be able to dive into what S3 buckets he actually has, because those are the permissions that are being applied by the policy. But you can also see that he's got some access that maybe he shouldn't have or doesn't utilize. And so we can kind of go back and forth with this used and unused permission toggle switch that gives us that really hardcore necessary information to see what Robert is actually doing and what he truly needs access to. So being able to see the use permission would essentially show us what the policy would look like in a least privileged model. Now, if we jump over here to the permissions tab, let's say for example, the permissions tab are going to show us exactly what he's been doing over a period of time. And he's going to show you essentially the activities, how many times, when was the last time they use it, and also really importantly, what the associated policy is that's giving Robert, in this case, that permission to set up. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the recommendation side of the house. But I'm going to back up and I'm going to use the CEM D1 S3 bucket access role that we were utilizing to begin with. Now. Let's dive in. How do we take those permissions and really provide a better option from a policy perspective? So we're going to head over to the recommendations tab and right from there, you're going to be able to see a big button that says create fix. We just need a little easy button and that's essentially what it's going to do. So we click create fix and essentially it's going to give us two easy to do steps. The first one is going to be obviously to create a new policy with the attached JSON. Now, it's very important to understand that it's not a one size fits all approach, that this JSON is very specific to AWS, where other platforms, as we'll look at here in just a little bit, will actually be very specific to those environments. So we'll copy this, and then at the second step, it's actually gonna tell us, hey, we need you to remove these other two policies because those policies are giving anybody that utilizes this role just way too many permissions or 
as we've said before, excessive permissions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this um, JSON and then I'm going to essentially going to attach it as an inline policy or like I said, you can do another truly managed policy and keep up with versions. But as I mentioned, it's a recommendation and you can do uh, multiple things with it. So we're in this role now inside of AWS. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on the right hand side of the screen that's going to say add inline policy. Now, here's where it gets really easy because essentially I would have to go through and choose out of 239 services and all the permissions that could lead up to just about 7,300 permissions. We don't want to do that. We're just going to go over here to the JSON. We're going to delete out the actual one and we're going to paste in everything that we just got from Cloud Entitlements Manager. Now, if I scroll up and scroll down, you'll see that it is in JSON that AWS can actually understand. If we click review policy, essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to see the permissions that this role actually needs just based upon all those factors that we talked about with the exposure level. So I'm just going to name it here CEM and we'll call it um, our, our access uh, policy for S3. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create the new policy. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and detach the other policies because we don't really need those permissions anymore because we've set up a brand new least privileged policy that is going to give everybody exactly what they need when they're utilizing this role. Now, as this happens, we're going to scan that environment one more time just so that way we can see some of the immediate benefits that are happening. So if we kind of go back over to uh, the, the environment, what we're going to see is, is that this access map uh, on the main overview page. Now, this access map is essentially going to be able to uh, show all of those permission changes, which we'll see here in just a little while. So um, now let's look at one of our other platform types. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and clear all to just kind of get rid of everything. I'm going to remove my following flag. And now we can kind of see that we've got some Azure accounts in there. We've got some GCP accounts in there. And let's see if we can filter on just our GCP environments. So now we can see a, a number of different projects, a number of different service accounts and users. What we're going to do is we're going to dive into one that's got a really high exposure level here at 100%. So as you can see on the main target screen, all the same information. What's going to be a little bit different is the recommendations. So when I click on create fix, this one is actually going to expose out some of the shadow admin privileges that this service account actually has. Now, that's a good thing because you need to know how does one account gain shadow admin privileges. And what we can see is, is that we've got one permission in place that is actually being used and several ones that are not being utilized. So what we want to do is we want to look at the, the options. What do we want to do with these permissions? You get three options really, right? Remove all shadow admin privileges or remove just the ones that are in use or not in use and then, or keep all shadow admin privileges. And I don't think you want to do that. So we'll go with the middle option here. Let's keep only the shadow admin privileges that are actually being used. So we can go to next at the bottom. And now you'll see that instead of just copying the JSON, CyberArk's Cloud Entitlements Manager is actually going to give you the ability to copy out the command for G Cloud Shell to be able to paste it in there. It creates the right permissions, and then the administrator would just need to add the custom role to that service account and then remove the ones at the bottom that is actually giving it those excessive permissions. So this is essentially how it works within the GCP environment. As I mentioned, We've got a lot more information right there on the screen. The access map is going to be very, very crucial, but it's giving us that capability. So now we've gone through AWS and we've gone through GCP. We talked a little bit about Microsoft Azure. What, how, does it, how do we get all those in there? So if we get these platforms in, we want to make it as easy as possible because we want immediate time to value. So if I go into AWS, for example, I can click on the little plus symbol at the top and here you can see, right, we can just add in an account ID and then we've got an automatic configuration that is essentially just going to spin up a cloud formation template and voila, everything is connected. So there's nothing that you have to install. 
Um, there's nothing that you have to do except for connect the account and we're immediately going to start to read all of the information in that account to be able to provide all of the value that is needed. So it's really quick to add those accounts in there. Now you might be thinking, well, what about some APIs? How do I interact with this product, this solution um, in a automated fashion? So what we can actually do is we can set up API keys for as many different platforms as you want. So if you want to interact with it through Splunk or through some other security event management system or whatever, you can add in an API key and you can do things like get recommendations and list all entities and get me an alert whenever something is actually going wrong or doesn't really look right. And we can even do that with webhooks. So we can set up webhooks for, let's say, for example, if the global exposure level has exceeded a certain amount, we can go ahead and send out a webhook right then and there so you can get those alerts. So that kind of takes us through some webhooks and some API, but just in summary, coming back to the exposure level radar, we're able to really see the changes that are happening in this account. If we zoom in again on that D1 account and we get into the entities, we can now see that the exposure level has significantly dropped uh, for that uh, S3 uh, bucket access. It's gone from 60 way down to zero and we're very well on our way to becoming a lot more secure and a lot more in that least privileged model. So Tal, what did you think about all that awesomeness? Listen, man, this is everything I expected and even more. Thanks, Chris, and thanks everyone for joining us.